Amen. Come on, church. Let's give some love. Amen. What an awesome ministry that we have. We thank Miss Kathy for her leadership and all the bell ringers as they are so obedient to practice and to learning. And we thank you for this beautiful prelude to a beautiful worship service on this Wednesday, Sunday morning. Amy and I greet you in the joy of Jesus Christ. Yes, we do. And we want you to know that on this Wednesday, Sunday morning, you can't blow out a candle, but you can blow out a fire. Once the flames begin to catch, the wind will blow it higher. So we've had some awesome wind these past couple of days, but it's to let you know that the flames of our candle are not going to go out. They're just going to rise higher for people to see and to celebrate and to know that we are the light. And today also the salt of Jesus Christ. Welcome. Our candles sermon series began with decluttering our closet. We had to go in and take some things out in order to find those candles because the darkness had overcome us. The Monday meditation last Sunday is a daily reminder that our most important responsibility is to keep our candles burning brightly to reflect the divine light to each person that we meet. Now, children of God, the journey continues as we expectantly and boldly go. Light your world. You will witness to the saving power of Christ in our lives. We invite you to come this morning. Come with excited and loving hearts as we now begin the closing of one more Sunday of this beautiful candle sermon. As we remember and we are reminded <laughs> that God is with us and God loves us and God is so able to do exceedingly great things. So we invite you to sit back today. We thank our Church administrator, uh, church administrative assistant, Miss Alana Dalton, for being our liturgist this morning. We're so blessed and thankful that healing has happened for our wonderful Miss Vicki Roth as she is back on the ivory <clears throat> playing for us. And the beautiful voice of Brother Dave Burleson as he comes and shares that gift with us. And topside, we have the Toms available, as always, to keep us online. Tom Kallenberg and Tom Latham. And we greet you, those online with us on this Wednesday, windy Sunday morning, to come and be with us as we invite any of our little people to come and have some time with the pastor as we come, know that Jesus loves us. This we know. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. So, Amy Joy, you know you like, you like to eat Papa's potato chips? Huh? You like to eat Papa's potato chips? <laughs> yes. What about those potato chips you think is really good? Oh, is it the crunch? Is it the crunch? I think maybe it's the salt. It's the salt on the potato chips that make them so yummy. Yeah. And in Black History Month, these were invented by a black man. Yes, he invented the 
potato chip that you love so much. But the most important thing for us to remember as Christians and as little people is that we are called to be the salt that's like on this potato chip. See how flavorful it is? It wouldn't be the same if there wasn't salt on it. And we're called as children of God to be the salt to the world, to season it, to flavor it, to let people be excited about Jesus Christ. So as you eat your wonderful potato chips and you taste the salt in those taste buds on your tongue, remember to be the salt to all those wonderful people God blesses you to see and be with every day. And that's especially for Miss Barb as she will come and take you to the nursery, okay? <laughs> Most gracious and loving God, we thank you for the salt that provides flavor to our lives and to those that we love. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Stand if you are able as you read the call to worship responsively. If the human body, body of blood and muscle, is to live, it needs salt. If the body of Christ, body of peace and justice, is to live, it needs us. If the earthly creation, bustling and blooming, is to flourish, it needs the sunlight. If the new creation, Jesus says, we are salt of the earth, light of the world. Our faith, our love, our hope, the essential as salt and light. But if the salt isn't salty, it isn't the light it's meant to be. And if the light doesn't shine, it isn't what it's meant to be. Jesus says, we are salt of the earth, light of the world. Briny and bright, we are God's faithful people. We shall be who we are meant to be in Christ. A welcoming oasis, a compassionate community, a justice-making people, giving glory to God. Let us pray together. God of mystery and of judgment, who has made us to be salt and light in a tasteless, shadowed world, Guide us in this time of worship. Grant us understanding and spiritual discernment so that others may see your good works through us. Give you the glory and be moved to serve you. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ nailed to the cross attests the cost of God's love and forgiveness. Our faith is not built Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please remain standing. This little light of mine 
I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine Let it shine Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine Let it shine All through the night I'm gonna let it shine All through the night I'm gonna let it shine All through the night I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Standing as we read Matthew together. Let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you use the saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your youthfulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bears, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that you put there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God this generous Father in heaven. The word of God for the people of God. We praise the Lord. It only takes a spark to get a fire going And soon all those around Can warm up in its flowing That's how it is with God's love Once you've experienced it You spread His love to everyone you want to pass it on. What a wondrous time is spring when all the trees are budding. The birds begin to sing, the flowers start their blooming. That's how it is. experienced it you want to sing it's fresh like spring you want to pass it on I wish for you my friend this happiness that I found you can depend on him it matters not where you're bound. I'll shout it from the mountain top. I want my world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on.
and you may be seated if you can in the joy of Jesus Christ on this beautiful Sunday morning. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Oh, my friends, if you had the happiness that I had. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, our Father, on a hillside in Galilee, your son called us to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Give us the strength and wisdom to become the people of the Beatitudes in our day so that your words may season the world with the flavor of the gospel and our lives be shining example of Jesus who is the true light of the world. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight for Lord you truly are our rock and our redeemer, amen. Go light your world. People of God, we're living in a different age than when most of us went to school, elementary, high school. They call this new age the postmodern world. As disciples of Christ, we are faced with new challenges to light our world for Christ. One hindrance is that America's membership in houses of worship continues to decline. In 2021, attendance dropped below 50% for the first time in Gallup's eight-decade trend. 80 years. Attendance below 50%. In 2020, 47% of Americans said they belonged to a church, a synagogue, or a mosque, down from 50% in 2018 and 70% in 1999. Since the turn of the century, sisters and brothers, the percentage of U.S. adults with no religious affiliation has more than doubled from 8% to 19%. Oh, but the sad thing is that the unchurched population has grown from 24% to 34%. A growing number of people are leaving the church for new reasons. They're not leaving because they have lost faith. No, not at all. They are, they are leaving the church to preserve their faith. They're leaving the church to preserve their faith. Americans now view an invitation to become a Christian as an offering for them to convert to the church or to join a club. So you can build the perfect church to try to gain them, but they still, church won't come. That's why I like the theme of our sermon today, Go, Light Your World. We can no longer wait for them to come to us. We have to go to them. Even though interest in the organized church is down, the Gallup poll indicates that the vast majority of Americans have an interest in spirituality. They are turned off to church, quote, quote, but not to Jesus. Oh, that should make somebody feel good that it's the building sometimes that turn folks off, but they know that there's a Jesus that loves them. There's a Jesus that cares about them. There's a Jesus that wants to get to know them. The building has nothing to do with Jesus. I believe the harvest is ripe, but, but we are going to, to reach, but if we're going to reach the harvest for the Lord, we're going to have to recapture Fifth Avenue United Methodist Church, our mission. The body of Christ, the true bride of Christ, was and still is God's chosen instrument to expand his kingdom to expand the kingdom of God. Those who are outside of Christ 
are desperate to find spiritual meaning in their life. Church entity has left them empty. But if we recapture our mission, Fifth Avenue United Methodist Church, know and believe that Jesus has the power. He's the only one that has the power to transform the personal lives of those we shine our light on. The reason the early church spread like wildfire is because people had a personal encounter with Jesus and they couldn't keep silent about it. They went to the market street and even to other cities to tell others what Jesus had done for them. Jesus had told them, don't say anything. Just, just take the blessing and go on and be, be quiet. They couldn't hold the, the love and, and the admiration for Jesus. They had to go tell somebody about it. It's getting in touch with Jesus at the core of your being that is going to generate the excitement that will propel each of us out into the world with the news Jesus can bring to change people's lives, to transform their situations. So what has to change if we are to recapture our mission, Pastor Clarissa? Well, Church of a Living God, I, I think it's going to require that God recaptures our hearts. God recaptures our hearts. We're going to have to see the loss as God sees them. Our hearts has to break when God's heart breaks and we have to genuinely care and serve those God sends us out to serve. There's a familiar phrase that says, four months more and then the harvest. I tell you, servants open your eyes and look at the mission field. They are ripe for the harvest. Some of you may be familiar with this, but can you tell me where Jesus was when he said this? He was in Samaria at the well with the woman he had just offered living water. Why would Jesus tell his disciples to open their eyes to see the harvest? It's apparent the disciples never saw the Samaritan woman. Remember, you walked around Samaria. You didn't go through Samaria. It was wicked. It had unbelievers. It had all kinds of things you didn't want to be in connection with. So you walked around it. And because they walked around Samaria, they couldn't see the harvest. They couldn't see the beautiful white tops of the wheat that was ready for reaping. It's amazing what we, as Fifth Avenue United Methodist Church, don't see what we are looking at. Jesus' strategy was to go where the sinners are. He never walked away from people that were his people. He went to those that weren't his people. You read your Bible, you see that he was always with the others. Salt and life don't and won't work very well from a distance, church. Instead of withdrawing from the people that God is calling us to serve for fear of, oh, they may contaminate us, their, their issues may rub off on us. Oh, I fear them because they don't look like us. Jesus not only ate with them, he Bless them. The beautiful thing is our churches are full of people who are already out there in the markets. They're already in the mission fields because they have jobs or they volunteer or they enjoy leisurely life activities. So you're already out there in the mission field with the people God is calling us to serve. We just need to ignite their fire so they can see that they are already standing in the mission field and that we are ready to build a relationship 
with them. And oh, don't forget that it's a time of prayer. It's an opportunity to pray for someone, to share how God can help them in their present situation, in their present struggle. Many people are frozen at the mouth. But if they have the heart, their hearts ignited with a fresh fire of a recaptured Fifth Avenue United Methodist mission, oh, that frozenness will melt away. You can't help but tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus Christ. You can't help but share the love of Christ with someone who's lost their way. You can't help but give someone a hug and say, it's all right, I've been there. I know how life can sometimes knock you down. I know how family sometimes can treat you. I know your circumstances because I was once there. But I heard a voice a long time in my life that said all I had to do was ask and it would be given unto me. All I had to do was pray and God would hear my petitions, would hear my concerns. Church of a living God, the fire will melt will melt the rough edges, will melt the attitudes that are not of Christ, the behaviors that are not of Christ. The fire of Jesus will be, won't be able to stop you, will, will keep you ignited for the light that God has placed in your life. You will witness to those you never thought you could say something to. You will tell the good news to those that God loves. Everyone in, your ch in our church is already embedded in the community where people are searching for significance for their lives, whether hurting or open to encouraging words and helping hand. People want that. What we must do is help them build a bridge back to a relationship with God by being authentic with them. They are open to building a genuine relationship with the one who can turn their lives around. It's like pets and kids. They know when you're authentic. They know when you're true. It doesn't matter. We can try and put on masks. We can try and put on cologne and perfume and smell real good. But babies and pets can tell the true nature of our hearts. When we, when we are authentic, when we are naturally just the disciples of Christ, broken, saved by grace, not perfect, people will see the light. They will see the transformation that God did in our lives, and they'll want to know how they can also have that kind of relationship. When we help them to have a relationship with God, a genuine relationship with God, they will naturally want to fellowship, fellowship with those who also embrace God, us, the church, the people. It goes together. They will see God in us and then want to be with us. Someone once said that the most important light in a house isn't the expensive, beautiful chandelier. It's the little night light in the hallway. Why? Because that's the one that prevents you from stubbing your toe in the middle of the night. Our churches are full of little night lights. They just need to be out there in someone else's darkness to show them the way back to a relationship with God. The superior love of Jesus that is conveyed in our genuine concern, in our genuine touch, in our sincere service to each other will find a receptive heart 
for the seed of the gospel to produce a harvest. Remember, we're not worried about the, the soil in which the seed is planted. We're just supposed to plant seeds. Apollo will do the watering and, Je and God definitely will do the growth. A receptive heart will take that seed that we're throwing out there. And we all have the potential to restore the disconnectedness that others have with God. Because God created us for a meaningful relationship with each other and with him. We are embodied with the spirit of Jesus, the one who moved beyond words and embodies the message that the Father loves each and every one of us. People of God, our postmodern world is hungry for meaning and connectiveness. Like the Samaritan woman, they have made a trip to the well. But the Lord's disciples don't see them. Lord's disciples said, oh, no, we're not going to go over there. Oh, no, not over there. We're going to go around. But you have Samaritans and others waiting at the well. They're waiting at the well, people of God. They're waiting for someone to see them. They're waiting for someone to shine a light upon them. But as they wait and no one comes, they leave and go home once again empty. Once again, broken. Once again, lonely. Once again, discouraged. All because we didn't go the way God told us to go. We took our light and we put it under a basket so no one would see it when we're out at Pick and Save and Syndex. We don't want anybody to see this light, so let me cover it up. But there was somebody that God brought your way. And because they didn't see your light, they left. Broken. Thank you, Lord. Almost everyone experiences hurt, church, and brokenness. That's what unites us as football fans, as being members of a family, uh, having relationships, being members of a church. We all try to escape the pain of our brokenness. Restaurants, concerts, stadiums are filled with people. But Americans are the loneliest people in the world because they're trying to connect with someone, something, even if it's for a couple of hours, but they still go home broken and without that relationship that will cause a transformation in their lives, that will cause a healing to occur in their lives. Hear the good news, Fifth Avenue United Methodist Church. Hear the voice of our Savior saying, go! Go into the mission fields. They are white and ready for harvest. Do you see them? Do you see them? Church, in your mind's eye, I know you have a person, you have a place, you have a people that you can see in your heart that need Jesus. Are you going to go? Take your light from underneath the basket. Let it shine so brightly that they will glorify our God, not us, our God who is in heaven. We go and take the light into their darkness for a true, authentic relationship with God. As I close this sermon, I invite each of you to prepare your hearts and minds to come to the table of the Lord. Not just come but come in a spirit of gratitude, giving thanks to God for planting the seed of grace in your heart. 
and for God calling each of us to be disciples of Jesus Christ and praying that through us and in us in the coming weeks the light of God's grace may truly shine brightly upon someone who needs to know who needs to know Christ saving love Christ saving salvation prepare your hearts and minds and spirits for the table is set all are truly welcome amen only takes a spark it only takes a spark salt and light is what we are called to be As we gather at the Lord's table, all are welcome. Having a common purpose, we receive growth from the love of God and nurture the nourishment from the body and blood of Jesus Christ. At this table, we are redeemed by God, reconciled to one another, and called to labor in God's fields where love and forgiveness are sown. The table is ready, the meal is prepared. Come, be fed, and savor the feast of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right in our greatest joy to give you thanks, God, of majesty and mercy, for you have called forth creation and raised us from dust. We bless you for the beauty and bounty by which each of us was wonderfully made in your image. Salty, light-bearing, seekers after righteousness, all who love Christ and seek peace with one another, all who know the power of Christ's forgiving love, come to the sacrifice of thanksgiving, this meal at Christ's own table. Come as you are. Come to be changed. Come offering peace to one another and your gifts to God. The light of the world is among <laughs> us. Yes, yes he, he is. is. The Spirit has seasoned us. We lift our lives and our voices in justice and praise. Praise our triune God with me. Honor and glory and wisdom might are yours forever. Honor, glory, and wisdom and might are yours, holy triune, life speaker, lawgiver, deliverer, savior, and Lord of all. Your love illumines the universe. Your infinity, your infinity multiplies the colors sounds, smells, and textures, and tastes with joy that fills our senses beyond all overflowing. The diversity of your radiance exceeds all knowing. In awe and love, we join our voices with angels and saints, <coughs> martyrs and cherubim, and with those who came before us and the generations that will follow in words ancient and never new and ever new. Holy, 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 Lord God of every power, the universe declares your glory from everlasting to everlasting. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is Christ who has come in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Pure brightness of Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. To you we turn, before you we bow. Behind you we follow. With you we go into the world, salt and light. Fulfilling your law of love towards God and neighbor, family and stranger, enemy and friend. You have taught us the way of love in your life, in your death, 
and in your rising. And you have shown us such love in the meal you first shared with your disciples on the night you were betrayed. You took bread. You blessed it. Broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat, for this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Oh, dear Savior, you then took the cup. You filled it with the wine. You gave thanks. And before you even drank, you passed it amongst the 12 of them and said, drink from this each one of you. This is my blood for a new covenant that delivers the world from the power of sin and death. Hallelujah, Lord. Do this in remembrance of me. Obeying his command, trying God, and looking for his return. At the last day, we offer here ourselves with this bread and this cup, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving for all you have done and will do to save us. Receive our prayers, our gifts, and us. Even so, come Holy Spirit, upon us and these gifts. Make them be for us a sharing in Christ's body and blood and make us receiving them, his body for the world and make us one with you, with each other, in ministry and mission in the world, and in joyful anticipation of that day when we shall feast at the heavenly banquet of Christ's final victory. We give you all the praise, all the glory, holy God, source, substance, and crown of all, now and forever, and the people can say, Amen. As we take the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that was broken for each one of us, we may partake. And knowing that his body was not enough, the soldiers pierced our Jesus in his side and the blood start flowing until it turned to water so we drink of the blood remembering our baptismal vows to sin no more Please pray with me the prayer after communion. Eternal One, to God be the glory. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your blessing and your word. Your word. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who are we to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, 
Who are we? Who, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Marion Williamson, one of my beloved poets. We are so grateful for the blessings that God has bestowed upon us. But there are so many that are in need of our prayer, need of our care. We lift up to you this morning, Brother Ted Milan. He had a challenging time on Friday to where he woke up and he couldn't breathe. Um, they have him on oxygen and a nebulizer now. But we praying for Mr. Ted. We're praying for him at this time. We've been sending him cards. Continue, if you would, please, to do that, to send him cards of encouragement and of care. We received a prayer request from one of the former pastors of our church, Pastor uh, Reverend John Bartlett. Reverend Jean uh, had surgery to remove a tumor on her brain this past week. Postoperatively, she went, she had a seizure. So Reverend John is asking for his flock to pray for Reverend Jean and him to hold them in your care. I put in the address for them in the mail out of the email this morning and we'll put that on the prayers and concerns. Um, so if you don't have it, just call the office and we'll, we'll get that information to you. That says something, Fifth Avenue United Methodist Church, about you. When people reach out for your prayers, for you to pray. Pray sincerely. Pray without ceasing. You've been asked. Be obedient to that ask. We are having listening sessions this week, Tuesday, fr Friday, and Saturday. It's in your bulletin, the insert. This is another prayer that we've been having on the prayer list for a long time about the leadership of this church and the ministries that we are called to lead. Pray without ceasing. Pray sincerely about the purpose and mission of your church. The statistics don't lie. The situations that people find themselves in are truthful to them. We are called to be the light and salt of this community church. But if we're not going to take it seriously, if we're not going to sincerely move where God is calling us to move, then let's not, let's not waver. Let God then lift up others that will take his call and go forward with it. People are hurting. People are hurting in this world, in our own neighborhood. God is calling us. God is calling us right now. Come be a part of this listening, these listening sessions, one of them, all of them, both in person and Zoom. Addresses, all this has been given out. Come. Let our doors be flung open and inviting and welcoming to people God is calling us to serve. And I know there are many within your own hearts. My cousin, Aunt Lurie, is, is still journeying with her amputeeing of her leg. But God is still in control. So let's take a moment just to reach out to those in this, that God is having us pray for, that God is having us to be concerned about. Let us let everything else go. Let us, not, let us not make it about us. Let us make it about who God is touching our hearts with right now. 
And I must say there is some forgiveness that I have to find within my own heart. I ask God to help me find that forgiveness. Help me to find that forgiveness that he shows me day after day after day because I'm a sinner saved by grace. Let us take all of it to God. All our cares, all our worries, all our concerns to God. God, we are broken people. We are hurting people. We are even unforgiving people. Help us to find our way that is lit by the light of Jesus. We bow before his light to be reignited in service, in compassion, in care, support, and obedience to you who calls us your children. Help us, Father. Help us. We turn and rely on the prayer you taught your disciples by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, If you are able, please stand as we praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. pray. Holy God of light and life that overcomes darkness and death, as we offer our tithes and offerings to you this morning, we pray that we may give the confidence and assurance of those fully convinced in our promise of resurrection. Help us to experience our generosity as those who have no need to hold back. May we live our days giving freely with love and grace. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Here in this place, new light is streaming. How is the darkness vanished away? See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. Shall arise at the sound of our name. We are.
are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly, give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water, here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters, call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion, give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away, but here in this place the new light is shining. Now is the kingdom, now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together, fire of love in our flesh and our bones. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us read responsively. You are the salt of the earth. Sprinkle us across our town, God, across our world, to bring the flavor of your kingdom wherever we go. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others. Man, gather us in. Oh, Mr. Dave, you need to stop. Be texting you again today. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we pray God's blessing upon each and every one of you. We thank you for your presence and your witness this morning to the light and the salt that God calls us to be. We pray you have a wonderful week. We hope you will come and be in conversation and listening with us this week. We pray you will find an opportunity to sprinkle and flavor someone's life to let them know the hope and the promise of Jesus Christ in the broken and dark world that we are in. And also just love yourself and give yourself a break. I've been trying to work on that myself. Give myself a break. Give myself a break. Turn to your neighbor and just give them, a, give them a smile. I know you got a mask on, but they can see it in your eyes. <laughs> they can see it in your eyes. They can see it in your eyes. Thank you, my dear love, as you come. And we, Ms. Alana and I, this has been a busy week. And um, thank you for your prayers for her and I as we continue to carry on the, the business administratively of the church. You have called us, O oh God, to embrace the mission of Jesus as our own. Our sight is not equal to this vision, and our strength, unfortunately, is not equal to this task. But you, O oh God, are merciful God. You give light to those who walk in darkness, and you grant strength to those who carry heavy loads. As we return to the workday, the workaday world, excuse me, 
Let us see your light before us and feel your strength within us. Now unto him who keeps us from falling, unto him who truly says, go, light your world. May his grace rest, rule, and abide and be with you now henceforth. And all of God's people can say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen.